Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our last video, we talked about how to construct a graphical program. So we're going to do that real quick. So file, new project, or file, new file. We're going to create an empty Java file, and we're just going to go ahead and call this second GUI. And so we're going to have our, we talked about how we need import javax.swing.jframe. And then in our class, so public class uh, second GUI extends JFrame. All of this is stuff that we talked about last time. So we've got our constructor, second GUI, and it's going to have the set size. I'm going to go ahead and set size to 500, 500. I'm going to set title to second GUI. I'm going to set default close operation to exit on close. And then we are also going to set visible to true. So this is what we talked about last time. And so now if I have a public static void main, string args, then we just say second GUI s gets new second GUI. So this should be very straightforward GUI that pops up. We've got a nice little 500 by 500 field that we'll have to play with. So we're actually going to talk about two things today. Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about are uh, J labels, which are basically text fields that we'll be able to put on here. Uh, text that the computer can change, the user's not going to be able to change those. And then we're also going to be talking about layouts. So in order to get the uh, in order to get the J label, then we're going to need to import javax.swing.jlabel. Um, so the J label is part of this new swing package that we talked about last time. Um, but for the layouts, there's actually four things that we're going to need. So I'm going to import, this is from the uh, Advanced Windows Toolkit, their Abstract Windows Toolkit. So the first thing we have is the container. And the container is basically a box that we're going to put stuff in and get stuff out of. And we're going to be talking about three layouts in today's program. So I'm going to import java.awt.borderlayout. I'm going to do import java.awt.flowlayout. And we're going to import java.awt.gridlayout. So inside of this GUI, remember I kind of want set visible to be the last thing that I do. I'm going to go ahead and create five uh, J labels just to just to have some J labels. So I'm going to call this first J label A. It's new J label, and it's going to have first. Then I'm going to say J label B gets new J label uh, second, and then J label. C gets new J label third, and J label D gets new J label fourth, and J label E gets new J label fifth. So I've got five J labels that we're going to be manipulating. I'm also going to need a container called pane. Now this container is actually going to be the content pane for this GUI, for this J frame. So I'm going to say container.pane gets this dot get content pane. And so this pane that I'm talking about is going to be where I'm placing all of my stuff. So for the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to set up a uh, grid layout. So I'm going to say pane.setLayout, and it's going to be a new grid layout. And inside here, there are actually two parameters. The first parameter is the rows, and the second parameter is the columns. So if I go ahead and make this 2, comma 3, that should be two rows and three columns. So now I can just do pane.add A, and pane.add B, and pane.add C. Basically, I'm adding these J labels that I just created into this layout in a grid form. So this is pane.addd and pane.addE. 
So now if I try and run this, then see what I've got here is I've got three rows, I mean two rows, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then because it was a two rows and three columns, there should be six spots here, but this six spot really doesn't have anything in it. Notice that these labels that we've created, they're left aligned and they're center aligned vertically. So I've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and there's space here for a sixth. Uh, for this grid layout, I can change the number of rows and number of columns. So if I make this three rows and two columns, Then I can see I've got the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the spot down here for the sixth. I can even change this to be uh, five rows and one column. And there you can see I've got five rows. Again, vertically they're aligned in the center, horizontally they're left aligned, left justified. So that's this first layout that we've got here, this, uh, the grid layout. So we're going to be talking about three different types of layouts here. So I'm going to comment this out. The next type of layout that I want to talk about is a border layout. And the whole idea with a border layout is that I want to put stuff in the north or the south or the east or the west or the center. So I'm going to say container uh, pane. Well, actually, I've already got container pane. I just want to take pane and set its layout to a new border layout. Now for a border layout, I don't need anything in the constructor. A border layout just has its innate ability. It's not something where I have to tell it how many rows and how many columns it has. But when I do pane.add, I, I have to tell it A, but I also have to tell it where to put it. And I have five constants in the border layout class. So I'd have border layout dot north. I could do pane.add and I can add B to border layout south. I can do pane.add and I can add C to border layout dot center. I can do pane.add D to border layout dot west. And I can do pane.add E to border layout dot east. And so what I can do is I'm, I'm basically adding elements to these four cardinal directions plus the center. So if I run this, it's going to say process complete, and it's going to look a little bit different. Um, notice that first and second, because those are the first two things that I added, they are left justified. They take up the whole top and the whole bottom. Center takes up the middle. And what happens is that these things tend to expand to fill out. So this third actually goes from here all the way to here. And fourth and fifth, because they were the last things that I added, they're actually added, uh, kind of crammed into whatever space is left. Notice that if I were to take these two lines of code and add them up a little bit higher, the way that this looks would actually change. Let me, let me take these two lines of code here and cut them and paste them here, not there. Let me paste them here. If I run this again, now I'm putting stuff in the east and west first, then the north and south, then the center. It doesn't change the compression here, though. I mean, this, this third, this middle part, still expands. And so what we tend to do when we use a border layout is we tend to take the most dominant term, the biggest object that we're going to have in our GUI, and put it in the center because it'll expand to fill out this border. And the other spots will be compressed as much as possible. Notice that labels are supposed to be top from the from center justified from top to bottom. First is actually flush against the top and second is flush against the right, which means this third actually goes from this part here all the way to this part here. So that's border layout. That's a, another way that we can do a layout adding objects to a GUI. So I want to talk about one more and that's the flow layout. And that's probably the easiest one to use. Um, but it also gives us the least control over what's being done. So let me go ahead and comment that out. So I'm going to do pane.setLayout to a new uh, flow layout. Again, no, nothing in the, in the uh, constructor here. And again, as I did before, I'm just going to do pane.add. So I'm actually going to just copy these lines of code from up above. And so if I run this, 
the flow layout is just going to have everything just kind of run together. So notice I've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth. All of the things we create are center justified, and there's actually fairly nice spacing around it. The problem is that if I try and add more stuff to this, it doesn't wrap around to the next level. It just kind of goes off the side of the screen. So you do have to be careful with the flow layout to make sure that the items that you're putting in here actually do fit in your GUI. But the purpose of today's video was to talk about the three different types of, uh, of layouts that we could get. So we talked about the grid layout, how I can put stuff in a rectangular grid by specifying the rows and columns. We also talked about the border layout, where I could put things in north, south, east, west, or the center of my GUI. And we talked about flow layout, which is probably the easiest one to use. It just puts them all together, one right after the other, in the order that we add them. I mean, if I change this order and try and put D and E first, let me cut those and insert those in. Then if I try and run this, then notice it should say fourth, fifth, then first, second, and third. And we also learned about J labels. These are, these are basically just texts that we can put on our uh, GUI. Uh, what we'll do in a later program in the later videos we'll talk about how to change the font of it to change the appearance because right now they're they're pretty much just your sans serif font up here it's pretty generic pretty straightforward but this does allow us to actually have GUIs with things on them which is kind of the purpose of this video in our next video we'll talk about some other things that we can add to this and also other ways that we can actually interact with our GUI so once again this is Mr. Potter thank you for watching have a great day